and welcome to Dashboard on the Road powered by Nissan. I'm Camille Lim. This week we come to you from Yangon, where we bring you a special report on the newest and arguably the fastest changing auto market in the world, Myanmar. After decades of military rule, Myanmar has begun a slow transition to democracy. Under new laws implemented in 2012, the country has opened up to foreign direct investment, aiming to boost its overall economy. GDP grew some 6.3% in 2012, but Myanmar remains the poorest country in Southeast Asia, with GDP per capita at about $1,300 US a year. The country lacks its neighbours in terms of infrastructure as well as basic living standards. But with a population of 52 million and a favourable geographic location, there lies huge potential for this emerging market. Myanmar has around 40 kilometres of roads for every 1,000 square kilometres, about 10% of Thailand, and only 18 vehicles per 1,000 people. Analysts forecast that the market is likely to grow at a compound annual rate of 7.8% to reach 95,000 units by 2019, driven by economic progress. Here in Yangon, auto demand has never been higher. Yet the market for new cars is almost non-existent. Instead, used Japanese imports and almost all right-hand drive dominate. Ian Rowley reports. For a car market that barely allowed imports for decades, the roads of Myanmar have a lot in common with Japan. Japan of the early 2000s. Nearly all Myanmar's 120,000 annual auto sales are used Toyota, Nissan and Honda imports as well as the occasional 1960s Hino school bus and Chinese Cherry QQ taxi. The surge in Japanese imports, explains Nissan's Shigeto Mizuno, is an easing of regulations that until just a few years ago made it almost impossible to buy a car. In Yangon, the roads are in reasonable condition, but increasingly crowded, as likes of Ford and Hyundai open new dealerships, expecting new car sales ahead. In the countryside, motorbikes dominate, while new administrative capital, Naypyidaw, is home to a brand new parliament, an 18-lane highway, but remarkably few cars. Another quirk, due to their Japanese origins, almost all vehicles are right-hand drive, even though the military government switched to driving on the right in 1970. Professional driver Yu Zaya Lin spends dozens of hours on the roads each week, regularly making the six-hour drive between Yangon and Naypyidaw. He says Japanese cars' reputation for good fuel economy is a key factor. Before we, the government don't allow to import the car from the foreign country, we, they, they were not so much traffic in Yangon. Now, the traffic is very bad, more and more. Yeah, most of the cars are from the Japan country, because uh, Japan car is engine, that, that engine power is, you know, not, not too big. Yeah, it, it is suitable for Myanmar people. Used cars sell for eye-watering amounts in Yangon, with a 15-year-old Toyota Land Cruiser priced at $70,000, at the Win and Spam dealership we visited. A six-year-old Honda Fit, that's going for over $14,000. But business is brisk, says the dealership's manager, with sales set to surge. Okay. Business is usually slower in the rainy season here in Myanmar compared to the cold or the summer season. After the rainy season, we sell about 20 to 30 cars a month. With the weather clearing and prospects for a brightening economy, that trend shows why automakers are warming up to Myanmar. With the opening up of Myanmar, more and more foreign automakers are trying to make inroads. Earlier, we were in the capital city of Naypyidaw, where Nissan made an important announcement. Nissan Motor Company CEO Carlos Ghosn announced plans for local production from 2015 during a recent visit to Myanmar. Ghosn met Myanmar Vice President Yun Yen Tun at his office in capital city Naypyidaw, a month after receiving state permission to build and distribute cars in the nation. 
I'm seeing a potential for the emergence on the midterm of a 300,000 cars a year market, uh, most of them being new cars, particularly assembled and produced uh, locally. So uh, I expect to have a boom of investments in uh, the area of the automotive industry. And we're giving ourselves as an objective, at least in terms of the Lions, uh, to have 30% of uh, market share in Myanmar. The CEO detailed plans for a 10,000-unit capacity plant in Bago, 80 kilometers northeast of Yangon, initially creating 300 jobs and producing the Nissan Sunny. The facility will be constructed and operated by Tan Chong. We have been uh, working with Nissan for almost 56 years. We we are actually complement each other very, very well. We have shown our commitment and uh, we have met our uh, expectation. Myanmar should offer us another opportunity. A move, analysts say, is crucial to be competitive in this new market. In a country like Myanmar, it definitely helps to be producing locally. Um, even with the reduced uh, import regulations, there's still a very, very, very hefty tax, well over 100%. So to actually be competitive and to be producing uh, vehicles that you can actually sell volume on, you need to be producing in the country. Nissan recently opened its first official dealership in the country, offering sales, services, as well as spare parts. For now, though, vehicle sales remain limited due to import restrictions. Actually, right now, at the 50% customer coming to fix the problems, and then the 50% coming for the mental service. Response from customers has been positive. The workshop is filled with different Nissan models since it opened this August. Customers are happy after they've repaired their cars in our workshop. That's because we have very skillful technicians, and also our service is of international standards. Another reason is because our spare parts are genuine and original, so many customers are bringing their cars to our workshop. With a new factory in the pipeline and several dealerships set to open next year, Nissan is ready to reach its goals in the newest market opportunity in Indochina. You've been watching Dashboard on the Road powered by Nissan. We hope you enjoyed this special report on Myanmar. For more, please check out our YouTube channel www.youtube.com forward slash Nissan Newsroom. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.